a cannon inclined at an angle of theta, where theta is 28 degrees, from the horizontal fires a projectile into the air as shown in the figure above. Projectile access to cannon at a height of 1.3 meters. That seems reasonable. From the ground and at a speed of 7 meters per second. That seems kind of slow. Okay. So what is the speed of the projectile when it reaches the highest point in its trajectory? First thing we're going to do is draw a picture. I like their picture, but I'm going to draw it a little bit differently. So we have V0, which actually starts about there, and then comes like this. And so the ball, the cannonball, shoots up and then has a ballistic free fall motion after that. So what's going to happen here is we can take this V initial and break it up into two components. We can do the X component and the Y component. Oh, that looks like a Y. There we go. We have the X component and the Y component. And what's going to happen is as it goes higher, there's going to be, any, there's going to be gravity going down. So this will be force due to gravity, which we can kind of relate. We can relate to the acceleration due to gravity, which will be 9.81 meters per second squared. And so what's going to be happening is since the velocity is up, acceleration is down, this velocity in the y direction is going to get smaller and smaller until we reach the top where at some undisclosed time all we'll have is the velocity in the x direction and so when it's asking what's the speed what is the speed v high which should not be confused with v max of the projectile when it reaches its highest point in the trajectory what that means is all we're going to be left with is the X component of the um, projectile motion. So it's actually probably going to be moving its slowest at the, at the pinnacle at the top. So, ah, so this is true that it's in the Y direction. It will be going zero meters per second. So this will be V not X, which will be constant the whole time because there's no force in the X direction. So we, this is a kinematic problem. I'm gonna write up the kinematic equations real quick just so we have those to reference. So I start with A equals A, which is basically saying that A is a constant. Take the integral with respect to time, you get AT plus V naught, which is you know, V final, and X equals, which again, X final, equals one half AT squared plus V naught T plus X naught. You should have these memorized, but when, you, when you're memorizing them, you should also realize that this is just the integral with respect to time of a constant, constant acceleration. In this case, the constant acceleration is either gravity in the y direction or zero in the um, horizontal. So the speed, the velocity in the x direction, I guess speed in the x direction, velocity in the x direction, will be constant. And you can see that through this second equation here because the acceleration in the x direction is zero. Therefore, you have v final equals v initial for everything in the x direction. Okay, now that we have the background story complete, we can just find the horizontal portion of this, of this triangle, which will be cosine of theta times initial velocity, which is cosine of 28 times um, what's our initial velocity? Of 7. So, doing some quick math in my head, cosine of 28 will be the same as sine of 90 minus theta, which is 62. If you have, um, as a rule of thumb, take the sine of a theta above 42, you can add 25 divided by 100. It's just an approximation, a rule of thumb. This, so this would be like 80.87. Yep, 0.87 times 7, which will be about, I don't know, 6.3. So 7 times 9 is 6.3, a little bit less, so I'd say like, I don't know, 6.2-ish. Okay, so I should probably actually do it for real. So on, clear, mode, click, clack, cluck. I want to make sure it's in degrees. So I can quit. Um, we'll do cosine of 28 times 7. And we get 0.618, which is about it. Ah, excellent. So, 6.2 is pretty close. Not meant to be perfect. 
and so the velocity at the top will be 6.18, which eh, is still pretty good. It kind of makes sense too because it's fired mostly horizontal. 28 degrees is, you know, more horizontal than it is vertical, and so most of the speed will be in the horizontal direction. Okay, got it. Now I know I could have solved that whole first problem with like just oh blink done. Um, the reason I talked about a lot of the background reasoning for that is because these problems, it's good to be able to look at the first problem, the first part of these multi-question problems, and have a good understanding of where it's coming from and where it's going, because it makes the second part, second and third part generally easier. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. At what horizontal distance, D, distance D, okay, from the cannon exit does the projectile land on the ground? Okay, so going based on this picture up here, object starts here, Oop, change colors just for some contrast, and we're going to find out how far it goes. <clears throat> so this kind of problem, you're going to see this time and time again in life. You're going to see this time and time again in first semester of physics. So if you're taking the final, this might be the last time you see this. And you'll probably see it some other time in life, but not that common. Uh, I guess I'm downplaying that, aren't I? So long story short, we're going to first find the time of flight, how long it's in the air using the y direction, and then we're going to find the x direction to find how far it goes. So we have our kinematic equations, x equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. Now x here, it just means some sort of dimension, a direction, so to speak. So this, is we can use this for x or y or z for the most part. So we're going to start by using it for y so that we can uh, find the time of flight. So I'm going to write that out real quick. y, I'm going to say final, equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus y naught. y final, well that's going to be the ground, so that's going to be 0. y initial, that's the aperture of the cannon, the opening, the mouth, the muzzle. Yes, because the muzzle's up here, breach is down here. The way I remember that is muzzle and mouth, we'll start with M. It's kind of like the cannon's eating the bullet. That's the, it's a mnemonic and it's terrible, but it works. 1.3 meters. I don't think that's what they're asking on this. So acceleration will be 9.8, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I should put meters per second squared on there, I'm not. The initial will be the sine component, so it'll be sine of 28 times 7, and then, which will be like, I don't know, 3.3, .3. and then time will be question mark. So that's what we're solving for. So this is probably going to give us a quadratic, which I might just go to Wolfram for, we'll see. So this gives us an equation, start from this point right here, negative 4.9, because 1 half of negative 9.8 is 4.9, t squared plus v naught, 7 times sine of 28. Yep, and that's positive. That'll be just normal t plus y naught, which is 0. But then I'm going to move the y final over to this side, so I'll take it by the negative. So it'll be minus 1.3, and I'll say that all equals 0. I'll multiply everything by negative 1, just so that I'm more positive. I like the first term in my quadratic to be positive. Does it matter? No. It doesn't matter. Um, it's just one of my idiosyncrasy. idiosyncrasies. Plus 1.3 equals 0. Okay, and then from this point here, we go over to Wolfram. We have 4.9. Should I use t squared? Eh, I'll use x. I feel more comfortable when my quadratics involve s. I think there's a 1.7x plus 1.3 equals 0. We could do this with a quadratic equation, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, square rooted all over 2a. But, you know, as you can see, this is easier, and I have confidence that you can do the quadratic formula. So 4.9x squared, there's x's, okay, plus 0. Sometimes I can think of sometimes using half x's, half t's, and then it's just terrible. Hmm, so this is a conundrum. Because, ah, because it's not 1.7, it's 7 times sine of 28. 
And then I'll put a little degrees there just to make sure that Wolfram understands. There we go. 4.9, 7, 8, 28 degrees. And I still get no zero. What am I doing here? Hmm. Okay, let's go back to this look real quick. Okay, so this is my mistake right here. This is B final. So this should be plus 1.3 minus zero because v final lands on the ground is zero but the y initial is 1.3 so i got that mixed up and this should be the same sign as there okay so now going back again switching our sign would do a negative there and now we should probably actually get a zero so one zero should be negative correct one zero is positive so this one is saying that if it was projectile motion it would have hit at some point it would have launched at some point in the past and this right here we're given a form of so we have x equals negative 0.279 not the one we want because it's negative time we want a positive time we have 0.95 hmm pretty good 0.95 so we have whoop and we solve for t t equals 0 0.95 seconds okay so now we'll take that, what a horizontal distance. Ah, it's silly mistakes like that. Try not to make silly mistakes. Can an exit, does the projectile land on the ground? Um, okay. And so now we have the time of flight right here. I'm gonna take that time of flight and we're gonna apply it to the X values. So we take this equation, come over here. We write it now in terms of X. X final equals one half a t squared plus v naught t. This is actually v naught in the x direction. I guess this one would be in the y direction, should have specified, plus x naught. So do some quick formulas right here. I'm just gonna do a lot of the canceling on the equation itself. Acceleration equals zero, so that whole term equals zero. X naught equals zero, so that equals zero. We know that t is 0 0.95, and then v naught x will be v naught times cosine of 28, which we already knew the answer for is like 6.18. So this is v naught x, so we don't even have to find that again. So x final will be 0.95, which is, let's see the time, times 6.18, which will be slightly less than 6.18, Hmm. Ah, here we go. Uh, I think it's going to be this one. 5.87. So let's check this out. On clear. Oh, why did I clear that? Second answer. Can I get it back? Can I get it back? Yes. Times 0.95. I know it doesn't matter. 5.87. 5.87. Check. So that's the answer we wanted. Excellent. So now what is the speed? Um, other projectile when it hits the ground. Okay, so go back to our kinematic equations. This is the one that we want to use now. So what we're going to do in terms of y. So we know when it hits the ground, there's going to be two components to the um, speed. I guess x is the horizontal one, y is the vertical one. And we want to combine those vectorally. So basically Pythagorean theorem style. And so we know what the x speed is going to be because it's going to stay constant the whole time. We discussed that earlier where v final equals v initial for x direction because acceleration in the x direction is 0. So we know that this one is going to be 6.18, 6.18, but we need to find the y one. And we're going to use our kinematic equation for that. So we're going to do v final equals a t plus v naught, where this is v naught y. So we're going to rewrite this as we know acceleration is negative 9.81 or 9.8, which is fine. 0 0.95 is going to be the time plus, and then, so we're going to have the hmm, 7 times sine of 28 degrees. This is the V now in the y direction. Um, and you can one thing to notice is that these are different signs, opposite signs, inverse polarities. So now I think we can just calculate that out. Oop, there we go. So we'll do 
9.81 times negative 1. Nope. I could have just done the negative, I forgot. Times 0.95. And I could I guess I could have just done it minus. It's okay. Plus 7 times sine of 28, or in degrees. And it gives us negative 6.03. Negative 6.03. So now we're going to square that, square that, square this, square that, square root it, and that will give us our triangle. So we have vector this way, vx, vy, v final. Okay, back to the calculator. Uh, we'll square that answer plus 6.18 squared. So that should be like 36 plus 36, so it should be about 80, 75, 74. Second square root, second answer. And that gives us 8.63. I'll just say 8.64. So this is 8.64, and that'll be meters per second. And it makes sense too because it's a little bigger than this one, a little bigger than that one. 8.63, that's good enough. I will call that a winner. So that's how we do this problem. Do a little bit of recap, kind of look to see where we went. So we had projectile motion, we're given initial velocity, but the um, starting point and the final point were at different heights. Um, sometimes when they, the starting and final point are at the same heights, you can kind of take advantage of symmetry and be like, all right, the time of flight is going to be, half of time of flight is going to be at the middle. So basically it reaches the top at about the middle point, which can sometimes be useful for calculations. But we don't have that here, so we don't use it. We just do time of flight of the whole thing. Not a big deal. So when we do the time of flight, we, we calculate that out. We use the uh, time of flight then to calculate how far it goes in the x direction. We then use that same time of flight that we calculated, the total time that the projectile is flying, I guess falling with style. We can then use that to find the speed at the end too, which we did. Not too bad. Uh, so this is very solidly kinematic equations. Hope this helped. See you next time.